Jonah said in verse 2, Out of the belly of Sheol I cried. How? Jonah did not see Sheol and did not go to hell. It's like a person saying, Lord, I deserve to go to hell because if I had died like I intended to when I told them to throw me in the sea and my intention was to die, then I would be in hell right now, not in the belly of this whale. So I confess, I deserve to go to hell. Being in the belly of this whale is a blessing compared to hell. But the fact that you are still chastising me is a token of your generosity, O Lord. Our teacher, St. Paul the Apostle, the man, the great saint, the worker of miracles, says in Romans 7, 18, For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, nothing good dwells. How is that? Really? Your handkerchiefs work miracles, St. Paul. He says, Believe me, my body, there is nothing good in it, but all of this is from the grace of our Lord. That is the person who knows how to pray, the one who has hope and truly believes in our Lord's mercy, and at the same time feels his poverty, his weakness, and that he deserves hell, but without getting into the details of sin. Jonah said, verse 3, For you cast me into the deep. The reader is not sure whether he's blaming or thanking our Lord for that, but as we read further, we can see he's surely thanking him and admitting that he deserved it. He sees this as a disciplinary act, which means that the Lord still loves him, which means there is still hope and there is a benefit from him being alive. This reassures him and makes him say to God, Thank you for throwing me in the depths. This reminds us of the words of St. Paul in 2 Corinthians 4.9, We are struck down, but not destroyed. This, is, this expression is very beautiful. Yes, there are times when we are struck down in the world, but not to the point that we are destroyed. No way. That's our Lord disciplining you because he wants you with him in heaven afterward. Think about the feelings we get during tribulation. Loneliness, for example. Just think about how lonely Jonah must have been. There's no harsher loneliness than that in the whale's belly, very similar to solitary confinement. He doesn't know whether he will go out or not. Add to that his fatigue, as we don't even know whether he's sitting or standing. He was just helpless, unable to move or scream. But during these severe circumstances, extreme loneliness, extreme fatigue, the most beautiful prayer comes out of him, and he says, you cast me into the deep. I have no one but you now. Inside the whale, the only one by Jonah's side was our Lord, even if by force. The Lord was saying, You couldn't see me when you were fleeing in the ship. I was with you, but you didn't see me. And when the sea got angry, you didn't see me. I want you to see me here. You have to see me. By the way, the purpose of prayer is to see God, to feel him as close as possible. Jonah says in verse 3, You cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. Let's explain the part about into the heart of the seas. Jonah used to see himself better than others, or at least better than the people of Nineveh. That is certainly why he did not go to check on them, because he was a Jewish prophet, and Jews always had a sense of superiority. God wanted to tell Jonah that Nineveh was better than him in terms of faith and repentance, of which they had a higher degree than Jonah because they did not see the whale, nor did they see the sea, but they believed right away. And instead of fasting three days, they did 40 days of fasting and prayer. But God sometimes puts us in difficult situations to shrink our ego and our pride, which fool us into believing that we are better than those around us. We all have pride to some degree. We feel that we are more special, Rich, richer, more cultured, more powerful, more beautiful, more righteous. All those things are false. As long as there's the word more, it can't be true. How do we get rid of that? It's removed from us when we are cast down to the ground. You cast me into the deep and the flood surrounded me. That's why the Bible says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. In Proverbs 16:18. Perhaps Jonah was haughty and felt like this was not the service of a prophet, so he fell a big fall. Concerning the part saying the flood surrounded me, it is obviously different from the sea. 
The sea is dangerous and sinks people in ships. The sea has salty water, but the floods means calm, drinkable water. And a quick translator's note here, in Arabic, the word is actually river. What's surrounded by a river feels like is that it is in the midst of the mighty seas. So Jonah was spared in a stretch of river surviving. Jonah feels God is comforting and protecting him from perishing despite the seas around him and the waves that would drown any person. Jonah felt that the river was all part of the Lord's plan as if he was being too kind with him while he was not worthy of that. Therefore, no matter how anxious and lonely you are, just praying calms the soul. Bear in mind that nothing's changed yet. The problems are still going on, and yet you can have a moment's peace by praying and crying out. Then Jonah says in verse 3, All your billows and your waves passed over me. When someone dives in the depths of the ocean, they'd feel the pressure of all the water over their heads. It signifies that God is pressing and squeezing Jonah. Inside the whale, he was overwhelmed with all the thoughts, sadness, anxiety, and fear, but he accepted it as a punishment. This is like what our teacher St. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 1.8, Our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. This is what we feel sometimes when we're overwhelmed above our strength. But our Lord does not burden us with more than we can handle. That said, we sometimes feel we cannot bear the weight anymore and can only say, I can't anymore. The issue is above my strength, Lord. I don't know what to do except cry out. We despaired even of our life. And Job said in chapter 30, 19, He has cast me into the mire, and I have become like dust and ashes. Job also was crying out during his time. 